Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we will examine the various wanderings of Homo species out of Africa beginning about 1.7 million years ago and the first migration of early humans into Europe and Asia. Homo erectus was the first species to move out of Africa and into Europe and Asia. It was also the first human species with more complex stone tool usage and likely had the ability to clothe themselves with furs and leather, which allowed the species to move into colder climates. It was also the first species to harness the use of fire. Fire became the most important tool and allowed Homo erectus to move well beyond the regions of earlier species. Homo erectus fossils are found in a widespread region across Africa, Europe, and Asia by about 300,000 years ago. One of the oldest Homo erectus sites is in Damascus, Georgia, between uh, Turkey and Russia, which is dated to about 1.7 million years ago. The site has yielded five skulls, which are some of the earliest humans known outside of Africa. The skulls were initially identified as different species, but now considered related to Homo erectus. Homo erectus was not as big-brained as modern humans, but specimens are known across a very wide geographic region, from Java Man in Indonesia, to Peking Man in China, to Lake Turkanta Boy from Africa, all likely belonging to a widespread species of human. It was during this time in Africa, Australopithecus and Paranthropus disappeared. But there was also another species that arose in Africa, Homo heidelbergensis, which would also move out of Africa into Europe to become recognized as Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthals. These populations of humans were more adapted to the cold, rugged regions of Europe and lived from 1.3 million years ago to 250,000 years ago for Homo heidelbergensis, mostly known from Africa and Europe, to 350,000 to 37,000 years ago for Homo neanderthalensis, known mostly from Europe and the Middle East. Both Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis survive through a number of ice ages during this period of time. Many of these populations were fairly isolated from each other. Study of the recovered DNA of Homo neanderthalensis indicates that individuals featured a number of modern-day European features, uh, including lighter skin colors, reddish hair, and very broad noses. These species were specialized for hunting big game and skeleton show injuries similar to modern-day rodeo stars, indicating that they often were in close contact with large mammals that were native to the region, like woolly rhinos, horses, mastodons, and mammoths. In Asia, one remnant of the Homo erectus hung on in the isolated island of Florence in Indonesia. This is the same island that the Komodo dragons are found on, as well as extinct pygmy mammoths. Here in a cave, paleontologists found the remains of a tiny species of human called Homo florensius, which is also believed to have been a remnant population that had become dwarfed as they lived in isolation on the island. The cave has yielded a wide range of dates, but the most agreed upon date is 50,000 years ago to about 11,000 years ago. This older date indicates that the small species may have originated from Homo erectus. Homo erectus lived in the mainland of Asia up to maybe around 70,000 years ago, with small populations of Homo erectus within the Indonesian island chains, uh, such as Java, where specimens dated between uh, 27 and 53,000 years ago. It was about 70,000 years ago that the genus Homo nearly became extinct. Aside from 
isolated populations in Indonesia, like Java, Homo forensis in Florence, and isolated populations in the rugged mountains of Europe with Homo nethandrolensis, the first migration out of Africa came to an end with the extinction of Homo erectus. During this time, 70,000 years ago, the Earth was within the grip of the last ice age. But evidence from ice cores also show an increasing levels of dust during this period, indicating a cold and dry period of time. Most of the big game that Homo erectus fed on was also becoming extinct. While in Africa, Homo heidelbergensis, or sometimes called Homo andersensor, uh, lived during this period in small tribal bands. There is evidence that Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthals in Europe, engaged in cannibalism in places like France and Spain, indicating starving populations. An interesting tooth and partial finger uh, point was sort of discovered in the Denosova cave in Russia which actually preserved a bit of DNA, which indicates a previously unknown isolated population of Neanderthal-like humans living in Asia during this particular interval of time. Molecular data from modern humans suggests that the population sizes um, dwindled to about 30,000 individuals during this period of time. It was during this time that our own species would rise to dominate in Africa, Homo sapiens, uh, within these small populations. Our species likely extended back to about 250,000 years ago in Africa, though it was not until about 70,000 to 60,000 years ago that modern humans began to move out of Africa and re-encounter the remains of Homo nethandrolensis populations in Europe and Asia around 60 to 50,000 years ago. Most of these remnant populations of Neanderthals were either killed by Homo sapiens or interbred within the population. There's some indication and evidence of interbreeding between the two species or hybridization and modern European humans exhibit some markers of early Neanderthals. Homo sapiens moved into the regions of Europe and Asia, previously occupied by Homo erectus. And there's no evidence that the two species encountered each other, although populations of Homo erectus hung on in isolated Indonesian islands until as late as 27,000 years ago. The oldest sites of Homo sapiens in Australia are 50,000 years ago, indicating the possible contact between the two species. Humans arrived in South and North America around 14,000 years ago, with larger populations about 13,000 years ago. By about 10,000 years ago, with the beginning of the Holocene, humans were a global species. Genetic studies of modern humans indicate very little genetic diversity and geographic variation, suggesting that all living individuals of humans are descendants of this later pulse out of Africa, and that we don't carry any of the deeper ancestry with Homo erectus. Race is not a biological construct and there is little evidence from genetic studies to indicate that modern human populations are descendants from different species. In fact, the genetic variation within all human populations differs much less than many natural populations of other mammals, including living chimpanzees. Continued study of the diversity of the human genome continues to indicate that humans likely arose from this tiny population living in Africa around 70,000 years ago, and that we can all trace our ancestry to these small tribes. And in fact, every individual that you see today likely had an ancestor within this tiny tribe, a small population in Africa 70,000 years ago. 
All right, be sure you're able to diagram on a map the various wanderings of Homo erectus, Homo florensis, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo sapiens out of Africa during the Pleistocene and early Holocene. Thank you so much for those of you who've hung on throughout the semester and have followed along with these lectures on vertebrate paleontology. If you would like to uh, access these video lectures after the end of the semester, you can check out my YouTube channel. And if you're interested, you can subscribe to my channel and watch other video lectures that I have for other classes that I teach and video essays and film filming of my field work and uh, that I all post on my, on my YouTube channel. There's a lot of material that we covered in this class and I hope you enjoyed these instructional videos as much as I've had making them.